Welcome back. It's time now to take a look at the top business stories. Research in motion in UAE deal to provide e-government services. Banking revenue stagnant reveals new report. And we find out how big the problem is surrounding counterfeit IT products. The GCC markets continue their mixed run. Asian markets fell this Monday. There were mixed results at the UAE bourses as the DFM continued to fall on the second consecutive day. The market was down nearly half percent to close at 1,739 points. MR Properties near, lost nearly 1%. Shares at Dew climbed 3.5%, while DP World was up 3%. 114 million shares were traded, valued at 235 million dirhams. In the capital, the ADX gained over half a percent to close at 2,778 points. Etisalat was up 1%. Taka climbed nearly 1%, while the Abu Dhabi Commercial Bank fell by the same margin. 711 million shares were traded, valued at 903 million dirhams. Research in Motion has signed a deal with the TRA, Etisalat and Do to support mobile innovation across the Middle East. RIM's co-CEO addressed delegates at Jitex this morning, and although he didn't comment on the lifting of the proposed BlackBerry services ban in the UAE, Jim Balsilli said the enormous popularity of BlackBerry Messenger in the Middle East demonstrates the potential for localised apps. E-government services will be the focus of the tie-up. So this is a market that we're so excited about What BlackBerry is uh, uh, trying to do for the region is to partner with Do and Etisalat is to promote the creation of applications on the BlackBerry for people of this part of the world. So those could be applications in Arabic, there could be applications with content that is relevant to, you know, if you want to see sort of a restaurant list or, uh, uh, you know, information that is specific to this geography, this country, other countries in the region, important cities, Kedha. So that is the scope of what we would want to do with them. Jitex is now well underway, and it's not just the global tech companies exhibiting throughout the week, but also sectors within the government, from the police to the RTA. The Ministry of Economy has launched its new range of e-services to enhance access and delivery of government services to residents and businesses alike in a bid to reduce delays in services. Officials say 50% of public services will be online by 2012, and 80% of total electronic conversion will be complete by the end of the year. Based on uh, His Excellency uh, Sultan al-Mansouri, Minister of Economy, we are here to introduce uh, our e-services as well as to interact with our stakeholders and to discover new technologies which will help us to achieve our strategic goal which is convert the Ministry of Economy to be e-Ministry of Economy. We are introducing new, e new services such as uh, e-certificate of origin. We are introducing the electronic uh, committees. Uh, minis uh, systems or monitor systems. We are introducing uh, central uh, business uh, central business license uh, system, which will uh, unify all the trade license uh, into one uh, platforms. Middle Eastern banking industry revenues have stagnated, with a minor increase expected at the end of 2010 in comparison to the previous year. A new study by the Boston Consulting Group reveals that loan loss provisions remain at a high level, above $4 billion for the first half of 2010. The report is part of BCG's biannual banking performance indices, which includes 34 banks from across the GCC, representing nearly 80% of the total regional banking sector. The report also reveals that international banks recovered faster in 2010, but still remain at a much lower revenue and profit index level than their Middle Eastern counterparts. For an analysis of the markets this week, we're now joined by Gaurav Kashyap, the head of the DGCX Futures and Options Trading Desk at ACM Middle East DMCC. Welcome to the show today, Gaurav. Glad to be here once again, Laura. Now, the US dollar rallied and closed on a high last week off the back of the Fed Chairman Ben Burtnick's speech. We didn't actually give us you know, that much of an insight into um, the purchase program there. What are going to be the main drivers for the currency market this week? You know, honestly, Laura, you're absolutely right. Ben Bernanke came out on Friday and 
to be quite honest, he didn't give us any new information. He did reiterate that uh, the U.S. is uh, facing downwinds when it comes to inflation. We have still very bad in unemployment numbers in the U.S. And we are seeing a generally poor economic condition in the U.S. But he did not give us any idea as to when or how much will be pumped into the U.S. economy in the months ahead. And as a result, we saw the dollar um, you know, rally on, uh, on these types of uh, lack of details. And basically, the dollar's reaction and looking at it coming into Monday today, I think this whole speculation about uh, the QE round two measures coming out of the U.S., I think it's a bit overdone now. And now we have to look for different types of themes in the market, which will be driving the price volatility in the, in the days and months ahead. Uh, looking at it this week, uh, loony traders will be having a very uh, interesting week. We have the Bank of Canada's rate decision um, due out this week. And we also have inflation data coming from, from, uh, from Canada. However, we're not expecting too many surprises there. Uh, we are seeing low inflation rates in, uh, in Canada at the time being, and there's no need for them to be looking at uh, hiking their rates. We also have the Bank of England meeting minutes due out later this week, but by far the most important piece of data will be the Chinese data, which will be the retail sales. We have GDP readings, and we also have uh, retail sales, as I've mentioned before. So we can expect Chinese data to also affect commodities. Absolutely. The Chinese data is going to be the driving force for commodity prices, particularly uh, base metals such as copper, and we're looking at gold to also be heavily influenced by that. Crude oil will also be in impacted by this number. In fact, we just had the industrial production number come out early in the evening, and that showed us a, a, a decrease in the overall industrial production number in the U.S. So overall, we're expecting commodities to kind of sell off in the build-up to Thursday's release. But uh, once again, if we see any upsides in the, in the data coming out of China, we can expect uh, commodities to rally once again. Well, thanks so much for coming in once again. Sorry, that's all we've got time for at the moment. But I'll see you, see you next week. Always a pleasure. The GCC markets ended mixed today. Let's check in on those numbers now, starting off with the UAE general indexes. Coming up now, let's take a look at the major international currencies against the dirham, followed by the price of oil and the precious metals. After the break, we find out how big the problem is surrounding counterfeit IT products in the Middle East. 